Sports Card Podcast, where we tackle the hobby's hottest topics in depth to help you navigate the sports card landscape and enjoy the hobby we all love. Here's your host, John Newman. All right, welcome to another edition of Hobby Quick Hits. I'm your host, John Newman. Today's show, we're going to do a 2020 recap of the hobby year of Montgomery 582, the exclusive club of tops. Uh, about depending on when you got in it, 200 or 300 dollars uh, per year. I got in it at the 200 dollar level, which uh, 2020 was the first year I've renewed for 2021 after a little snafu. Tops made things right, took care of those of us that uh, were in it. Uh, and we remain in it. And uh, I really like uh, the club. I, I've done well uh, with it. And what my point of this show is kind of the to go through the issues. Maybe you know, for those that are are not in the club, you know, I was I was shocked in, in reading some social media posts when others were talking about Montgomery 582. I saw people respond and said, "What is this? I never heard of it." It amazed me how, and it was more than one person. It was it was multiple people that had not heard of the Montgomery 582 Club. And so uh, there's been plenty of talk about it, but I wanted to do, now that the year is over, all the sets are out, I open what I open, I kind of wanted to go through and discuss each release, you know, from the sets uh, to what I got, and even talk a little bit about the online exclusives that I was able to buy and what I actually did with them. Just kind of give you an overview. So again, I'm into the club for the $200 uh, level. The first set came out was, if uh, you know, if you look it up, it's the red bordered uh, set. Before we go into the set, I, a little note here. Uh, this was released, this first set was released in 2019. And so this... This membership uh, kind of contains both years, 2019, and concludes in 2020. So this first red border set was a lost design by Tops, and the rookies in this uh, 20 uh, card set uh, are good, are very good. This is definitely a set if you can pick up on the cheap or even singles on the cheap. I highly recommend you do it. Uh, so let's talk about, it's so obviously you got your Trout, it's got an Alonzo rookie, a Vlad Guerrero rookie, you got your Acunas and Sotos, uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. rookie as well, it's got uh, uh, Glaber Torres, Shohei, uh, Kyle Tucker rookie, and um, uh, that's it, a Chance Adams rookie, it's got a couple on the, on the back end, Clint Frazier and Ryan Yarborough, not a lot to write home about there, but uh, then you got to take uh, some of the lesser uh, with the better, and, and it is what it is. But you got, you know, nice rookies in Alonzo and Tatis Jr., uh, Guerrero Jr. as well. So it's, if you can grab either a set cheap or some of the singles uh, at a decent price, I advise you to do it, especially if you believe in those players. Definitely. Uh, something to think about when it comes to the grading aspect, something I do with the red borders, uh, much like a black bordered card, uh, they could probably chip very easily. It's a good opportunity if you got a really nice specimen of one of those rookies or even superstars, you get it graded, comes back at 10, and that card's in a whole new light. This set did contain a random auto. I did not do so hot in that category with my auto being a Chance Adams rookie. Now it's a rookie auto, uh, but Chance hasn't played uh, very well and you know he's a pitcher and we know uh, how that goes. On to set number two. Uh, this is a set that I'm very fond of. Again 20 cards. This is a 1968 baseball action stickers test set that they did in 68. It's a white card, uh, card slash sticker, uh, with the player kind of just being uh, on uh, against that white background. Uh, I like this set. I've actually 
went and purchased a few of these sets that someone was selling uh, on the cheap. So I got more than the one that I got from being a member itself. I've also went and bought quite a bit of the Luis Robert rookie that appeared in the set. This is his first tops card slash sticker, if you will, with the rookie logo designation. So if he turns out to live up to the hype and uh, becomes a, you know, a, a perennial all-star, potential Hall of Fame player, this will be one of those card slash stickers that people will backtrack and, and look for. So I bought quite a bit of the individual Luis Robert. Uh, some are off uh, getting graded. Uh, some I've gotten back graded already. Got a, a few tens uh, uh, of that card. So let's go through and highlight some of the key cards, if you will. Uh, Jordan Alvarez, rookie, uh, is in it as well. For veterans, you got Killebrew, Bob Gibson, Cal Ripken, Ted Williams, uh, Roberto Alomar, Wade Boggs, Tom Glavin, Mike Piazza, and Willie Mays. Uh, for other rookies, you got Bo Bichette, another one to be looking up, uh, looking at if you're looking to pick up some key uh, singles uh, as well. Gavin Lux is also a rookie in this. Nico Horner from the Cubs also is one of the rookies uh, into the set. So now we're on to set number three of the 2020 year. It's the 1969 Test Issue poster set. Again, 20 cards. An autograph card uh, came, random autograph card came with this set as well. And these are uh, different colored uh, uh, cards with a uh, semicircle with the player coming out of that with a flag banner below. Kind of a, a neat looking, different kind of uh, concept card. Uh, again, one random auto. Let's talk about those rookies. Very similar to the sticker set that came out prior. You got Jordan Alvarez, Aristides Aquino. Aristides Aquino makes his uh, Montgomery Club debut uh, with this set. Bo Bichette once again. Uh, also Gavin Lux once again. Uh, Dustin May and Brendan McKay are also rookies in this release. And uh, Mike Trout uh, as well. Jordan Yamamoto is, I uh, forgot him, he's a, a rookie in this set as well. So I mentioned for stars, you got Trout uh, and, uh, you know, Vlad Guerrero Sr., Ken Griffey Jr., a little light on star power, but definitely makes up for it with the rookie selection. Again, one random auto. I did better with my random auto on this one than I did in set one. I pulled a Gavin Lux uh, rookie auto. That is still uh, in the process of getting graded. have not got that back yet, but uh, to under my inspection, looks to be in very good shape, maybe a 10, so hopefully that's what it pulls. On to set number four which is from the 1961 Topps Dice Game uh, checklist. 20 cards on this set. This is probably one of my favorite looking cards. These are black and white. Pretty simple. Square box uh, at the bottom with the player's position, name, and team. Let's go with, uh, they went with some veterans in this, retired players. Let's go over those as well. Uh, Nolan Ryan, Mark McGuire. Derek Jeter, Johnny Bench, Edgar Martinez, George Brett, and for the rookies, Anthony Kay, Zach Gallen, Nick Solak, uh, Jesus Luzardo, and that's it. So it's a little bit light on, on rookie players. Really, those were all, for the most part, pitchers. So rookie pitchers. Uh, for stars, you got Bryce Harper, Kershaw, Judge, uh, Cabrera Bryant, Machado, Joe Mauer, Devers, uh, Pujols, uh, Altuve, uh, and um, that's it. So that's the 20 cards. A little light on star power, little, definitely light on the rookie selection, but to me, the best looking set uh, there. I didn't do anything outside of receiving the set. You know, it wasn't a set that I went on the secondary market and looked for any additional sig uh, singles like I did 
on the previous sets. And then set number five, uh, the members vote uh, checklist set. These are really cool cards. They were by whatever team, whatever the player's team, that was the card color. Uh, big name, uh, big team name at the top. Uh, solid team player name at the bottom with position. Uh, this also contained uh, one random autograph, uh, 21 base cards. One of the cards was a Mookie Betts thank you card, just to kind of say thanks for being a Montgomery member. It was It's unnumbered. It's actually numbered uh, TY. So let's go through this set. I'll just kind of go uh, for rookies. You got Luis Robert, um, Gavin Lux, Jordan Alvarez, the three kind of standby big name rookies in the set. Uh, for retired players, you got Griffey Jr., Jeter, Nolan Ryan, Hank Aaron, Ted Williams, Willie Mays, Ichiro, Cal Ripken Jr. Uh, and so heavy, heavy retired star power. For current players, you got your Trout, Acuna, uh, Tatis Jr., not a rookie now uh, in this version because it's 2020. Uh, Juan Soto uh, and Aaron Judge uh, rounds out. Oh, Cody Bellinger. Uh, Nico Horner is also another rookie as well. The Mookie Betts thank you card. And one autograph uh, in the random autograph in there. Again, I didn't do too great uh, with my autograph. It's uh, Lourdes uh, Gurriel from the Blue Jays. So that concluded the five 20 card sets. Let's talk about uh, the other set. The, with being a Montgomery Club member, they send you the full Series 1 and Series 2 uh, set sealed, factory sealed, uh, with the obviously Montgomery 582 logo. Have not done anything with this yet, meaning it's still sealed. It's sitting on my, my shelving. Um, have not determined ultimately what I'm going to do with it. Either sell it outright Sit on it. You know, I, I asked a couple people on social media. A couple people said, you know, with the rookie class, maybe wait a couple years. If these rookies pop, that set will increase. Um, that's a thought. Uh, I'm thinking about breaking it up, selling team sets, selling single cards, maybe taking some of those key rookies out if they're gradable, submitting them for grading. So uh, I've got all sorts of thoughts uh, in my mind. But as of right now, have not determined uh, what direction uh, I'm going to go uh, there. So let's talk about some of the uh, wax you were able to purchase uh, from uh, this, you know, being a Montgomery 582 member. Based off memory, I'll try to do this in the order of release. Uh, I may be off by one or two products. Uh, one of the first products they offered was Bowman. Uh, sapphire uh, uh, boxes. I, I bought all I, I could. I sold about half of my allotment, and I, the other half is still on my wax shelves, uh, what I call marinating. So probably to be sold at a time to be determined uh, later. So I did, actually didn't open uh, any of that product. Uh, I sold half, kept half uh, sealed. Uh, as I do traditionally with a lot of Bowman uh, products, especially uh, ex exclusive ones. I kind of let them marinate because a lot of the prospects and rookies in there haven't officially popped yet. That's a product that usually gets a jump when one of those uh, kind of pop and, and start playing well. So I got some of that still socked away, sold half of it. Uh, in many of these cases where I've sold... Uh, some, if not all, of this exclusive product I've made out pretty well. Let's just put it that way. Um, I've paid for that $200 uh, yearly membership uh, a few times over, if not uh, much more, and I've done very well. So let's go to the next uh, release that I was able to obtain as a 582 member. My One of my favorite products, uh, frankly, of the year, uh, period uh, and it, it it's not exclusive to 582 we were just allowed to buy it uh, earlier and that's the uh, finest uh, flashback uh, the based on the 93 
Tops Finest Baseball, the first ever uh, set. These basically looked just like that with with the mostly modern players in it. I, I opened plenty of the 93 Finest back in, in the day when I had my card store at the time. Sold plenty of it, opened plenty of it, and opened in, I opened the box. I, I was allowed to get uh, two boxes of this. Uh, I opened one, and the box I opened uh, was a hot box, I believe. I got more than the odds. I got uh, like two golds, uh, a black Gavin Lux to 25, which is off getting graded. I've, I've been lucky this year pulling Gavin Lux stuff. Uh, so that black refractor to 25 is getting graded. I pulled a uh, Luis Robert, uh, Robert, keep saying that. Uh, that's uh, off getting graded as well. Uh, Bregman Gold, a Bregman Black, same box. Uh, some other stuff, uh, your two regular refractors, I think one was J.D. Martinez and the other was Dansby Swanson. I've, I've sold both of those for a pretty good coin considering the, the names that they are and uh, did real well with the, the box I opened. The other box I actually packed out uh, on eBay. Uh, I was having trouble selling it as a whole box or I was getting sort of low ball offers and I saw kind of what other folks were selling individual packs on eBay which was very high. I kind of listed my box by packs uh, and and came in under them, but I, I forgot what I was asking for, like $28 a pack times 24. Uh, these are boxes that cost $55 direct from Tops. I thought the, the price point on these was actually low. Uh, I wish I could have bought more. It was a great price for what was in the boxes. So I wound up selling the, the other box, I believe 24 packs at $28 per. Keep in mind, the box cost $55. So the, the ROI on this, this is probably the product I made out the best on uh, uh, of all the Montgomery 582 stock. So on to the next product, Topps Chrome uh, Black. Uh, I bought two boxes of this as the allotment allows. I opened uh, one, uh, did not do great. I did all right. I'll pull the Nico Horner to, I uh, believe, uh, 50 auto. And, uh, you know, the base cards were actually terrible, honestly. Other than I did, it was a Nico Horner box because I got a, a regular rookie and the autographed to, I believe, it's either 50 or 75. I uh, haven't done anything with them. I still have it. The other box is on my wax shelf. Uh, getting, uh, oh, I take it back. I, I bought three of these. I bought three of these. I opened one. I sold one uh, for a little bit of a profit. And the other one is, I'm looking at it as I talk here, is uh, also on that wax shelf to be probably sold uh, at a, a later date. Uh, on to uh, the last product I bought. And I just received it. Uh, uh, members, this is definitely only to members only. The Brooklyn Collection. It's a seven card uh, box, uh, three base cards. These are thick, uh, 100 to 130 point uh, cards, uh, seven cards, three base cards, two colored parallels, and two autos. I got my two boxes and I opened, uh, I literally actually just opened the box as of this recording. And I did very well on the box I opened. For my base cards, I got Clemente, Ted Williams, and Garrett Cole. For my colored parallels, I got a Sandy Koufax, number to 40. A Duke Schneider, number to 75. And my two autos were both colored. Uh, Tim Lincecum to 50. Not, not terrible. Uh, but the other one was the big hit of the box. It was an orange number to 20, an orange number to 20 of Chipper Jones. So a Chipper Jones on card auto to 20. Uh, I think it's going to make that box. I did well even with the base cards, Clemente Williams, a Koufax to 40, Snyder to 75. Real happy with that box. And uh, the other box, again, 
I kept that one closed, which was my, my plan. I will say there is a temptation. I'm usually pretty good not being tempted to open things and have good willpower. That box is sort of talking to me, saying open me, open me too. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to resist after the box I open with the chipper. Uh, quit while I'm ahead, as I like to say. And so that other box remains on that wax shelf I, I talk about so much during this episode as well to probably be sold at, at a, a later date. Or maybe that, that might be a product I, I open up on a rainy day. But I, I think my full intent is to sell it. Now, I missed out, I believe, at least on one product, maybe two. Uh, the, the last product I know I missed out on for sure was the Garbage Pail Kids Chrome Edition. Uh, that I would have bought it just for resale, purpose, truth be told, not to open. Uh, the email went to my spam folder, and I missed it. And when someone else kind of said, asked me, hey, John, how many did you get? Uh, and I checked my spam folder already about four or five hours had passed. I, I went and checked anyway, and like I said, it was sold out. So I missed that product. There may be another product I, I may have missed, but for the most part, uh, I got uh, all the product in at the allotments at the max allotment you're allowed. I did very well uh, on 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 resale if if that's your thing. Uh, like I said, the finest flashbacks uh, were a huge thing for me. I really uh, did very well with that. The Brooklyn connect, uh, collection box that I opened, uh, I I haven't done anything with them yet. I literally just opened them. Before I hit record here, and uh, I think I'll do fairly well uh, on those as well. And one of the the last uh, online exclusives of 2020 that I was offered was the UEFA Soccer Sapphire. Uh, and uh, if you know anything about me, uh, soccer's not my bag. I don't open it. Don't really know it other than your major stars. Uh, your your Pele's, your Maradona's, your Beckham's, and and that sort of thing. But you know, the, the, I, I bought them knowing they would be hot. Everyone was uh, uh, clamoring for them, and so I bought the allotment of two boxes. Uh, I have sold one uh, on my slabs for almost uh, five hundred dollars. The S, the initial offering price was eighty, so I almost uh, you know five times uh five times my money over five times and so uh it was very easy to to buy that when you knew you would kind of uh get that sort of ROI and so I bought two boxes like I said sold the one on my slabs uh just shy of 500 still have the other not sure what I'm going to do with it just kind of maybe wait a little bit Obviously, I'm I'm ahead even without selling that one, uh, you know, and so no rush to uh, to move that. Although it is tempting with where they're at to just sell that one uh, as well. So again, uh, we'll see. So it's a great uh, club in my opinion. Thumbs up from me. If you can get in, I, I highly recommend it. If you know, if you know whether you like them or not, if you're a flipper or a reseller. There's opportunities uh, with being uh, a club member. Again, like I said, I would have bought Garbage Pail Kids Chrome for the full intent to just sell them, uh, and, but I, I unfortunately didn't get any of those. But the products I did get, uh, what I what I sold, paid for what I opened, paid for the club membership, and went beyond that as far as uh, financially goes. So. It's something, unless something radically changes with the format or what they do or the price point, it's something I'm going to just uh, re-up, renew each and every year. And uh, have really glad I, I did it the second year. I missed the first year and, you know, not really knowing what it was going to entail and thought it was sort of a money grab on Top's part, but uh, quite the opposite. So I'm very pleased, very happy uh, with the with the product and uh, uh, can't recommend it enough if you can uh, get it. So it'll be interesting to see as the hobby's booming and expanding and new people come in. Is this going to lose its luster or is this not? 
you know, a lot of people pointing to 2019 and 2020 and saying there's going to be a lot less Montgomery 582 stuff those years, but they think that membership has, has grown and more products being produced, and so that the 2019, 2020 editions will be lesser produced, lesser scale. So I don't know. I, that time will will determine that. We'll play that out. Uh, I, I'm not even thinking necessarily on that level. Just as I enjoy the products for, for as far as what I've opened, the looks, the fact that you uh, many of them you can only get uh, online exclusively and I've done very well uh, when it comes to selling them uh, as well too. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of recap of the 2020 Montgomery 582 year. If you're a member, let me know how you did, what you think of the set. Are you staying in it for the long haul? Are you kind of disappointed or something happened that has uh, dissuaded you to uh, jump off that Montgomery 582 ship? Let me know either way. I thank you for your time and for listening. Uh, remember, we'll see you next week with another episode of Hobby Quick Hits. But remember, Friday, another episode of our bigger interview show, Sports Card Nation. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon. Hey, folks, thanks for listening to the show. Wanted to give out our social media links where you can follow the show even when you're not listening to it. On Twitter, we are at Hits Hobby. At Hits Hobby, H I T S H O B B Y. On Instagram, we are at Hobby Quick Hits Podcast. At Hobby Quick Hits Podcast, all one word. Our website is www.sportscardnation.net. Look for the link to Hobby Quick Hits. You'll find us there. And you can always text us on our text line, area code 315 491 02. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. They give you the tools that are needed to allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And they distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast. It's why I... Use it and why you should too. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today.